My name is Billy Ballou, uh, and what I do is contact juggle. People like it a lot, it's very, very unique. It's so mesmerizing to them because they're not used to seeing it. September 2009 is when I started performing out here, and um, it's pretty much been my only source of income uh, in college since, uh, since then. You know, it's called contact juggling, which um, is kind of an off-putting name uh, when you don't know what it actually is, because when people think juggling, they think people throwing things in the air, and that's just one of the more common types of juggling that people have seen a hundred times. But then when I do what I do, they don't actually expect it. <laughs> they hear contact juggling, and they're like, well, juggling, they must be tossing things, right? But then they see uh, what I do with this, you know, giving illusions of weightlessness and floating. Everything takes practice. There's no tricks or gags or anything. It's just all many hours of repetition, getting used to the way the ball feels in your hands, knowing exactly how it's going to move, where it's moving. So everything, there's no strings attached, but you can pretend there are. <laughs> you can create a lot of optical effects like that. Fun to play with people. Some people ask, are there strings or anything? And that's when I usually pull out those kind of tricks. <laughs> so then they don't really know what to think. It's very basic origins are very hazy, because um, it's been, evidence at least has been traced back to 1500 BC. Uh, cave drawings on, the, on walls in Egypt have been depicting people rolling spherical objects across their bodies. With this kind of ball and the isolations and moving the objects so that it looks like it's floating, uh, that is mostly traced back to a man named Michael Motion. People know him most commonly through the movie The Labyrinth. Uh, David Bowie was the star of that movie and he did kind of stuff like this. But um, it wasn't actually David Bowie. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, it was actually Michael Motion was behind behind David Bowie, sticking his arm underneath David Bowie's arm and doing it for him. Um, so it was very. That's what popularized this into a little bit into the mainstream, gave it a nudge into people recognize it mostly from that movie, not many other places. It's just like stuff like this um, is mostly credited to Michael Motion. He's a very, very. Uh, original and innovative juggler. He's come up with many different styles of object manipulation. Contact juggling isn't the only name that this is called. It's the most common though. Michael Motion originally called it dynamic manipulation. And other people have taken other names like sphere play, um, various types of orb manipulation, or, but contact juggling is the most widely used. Um, this is actually all based off of the, one of the more basic moves called the butterfly, which is essentially this. And it involves keeping the ball rolling on the path that is made between these two fingers. So if you look at it sideways, I have my index finger and middle finger spread apart so that the ball kind of has a path to roll on. Um, but it does take a lot of practice. It's not. It's not really an easy beginner move, but it is one of the most basic moves to move on to the rest of what contact juggling is. It's basically a transitional move. Everything transitions into everything else through that move. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, variation in what you can do with your hands and arms, but that's usually the basic, the most basic move that leads into everything else. But there's three different categories actually of moves, and. Uh, one of the most popular categories among the audience is isolations, which is any move in which you're keeping the ball still while moving your hands around it. So if I move the ball in a circle on my hand, this is just rolling it in a circle on my hand. But to make it an isolation, I move my hand in the opposite direction to make the ball appear still in midair. So because the ball appears so still and my hand's moving, it doesn't seem like my hand is actually having any effect on the ball, which is why it appears to be floating. So any moves which the ball stays still while your hands are still moving is called an isolation. The most basic isolation is probably this. It's just literally moving your fingers around the outside of the ball. 
What takes practice is keeping the ball as still as possible. You know, people don't want, you don't want to be doing this. You want to keep the ball as still as possible as you're moving your hand around it. So you need to learn the exact circumference, circumference of the ball in order to keep it as still as possible. But they're very, this is called the Enigma. This is one of the most popular moves. It involves a little bit of coordination in the hands to get it to move like this. Various uh, variations of the Enigma. But it's all about keeping the ball as still and moving as smoothly as possible. You don't always have to keep it perfectly still, but when you do move it, you want to make it smooth and fluid. You don't want to have jerky movements. So it's all about practicing fluidity and continuity and everything that you're doing. When you're transferring from hand to hand, you want it to be smooth transfers, like it's not even moving from a one surface to another, like there's a solid surface underneath it. You want it to be bumpy. You want to just keep it, everything smooth. So that's isolations. And then of course there's arm rolls or body rolls depending on how much of your body you use, but most people use their, stick to their arms. So anything in which you're rolling it across your hands or your arms are generally in the category called arm rolls. Um, and that, what I was doing right there was actually a combination between arm rolls and isolation. So you have like the arm roll, but then if you try to keep the ball still, then you're using arm rolls and isolating the ball at the same time. And uh, the third category, which I actually can't show you, is uh, called palm spinning, which involves more than one ball. This is generally the largest size that people use. This is four inches in diameter, but other people use three inch or two and a half inch balls, and they'll spin, spin multiple balls in their hands, kind of like the Chinese meditation balls. But they'll do up to like four with three rotating with one on top. They call that the four ball pyramid. You can do, you can do multi ball stuff without even knowing how to do single ball stuff because it's a completely different category of tricks. You don't need to know one to learn the other. Oh yeah, Friday and Saturday nights, um, usually between 8 and 10, right across the street from the Moana Surf Rider on uh, Kalakaua. I do a little workshop. For It's a public workshop for people who are interested in learning. They can um, meet me in front of the zoo at 2, Honolulu Zoo at 2 o'clock every Saturday. But I ended up coming across a, across a couple of videos online and I saw like two or three of them and after a while I was like, that's really awesome, I really want to give it a try. So I did a little research into it, where to buy the balls, which are surprisingly easy to find actually, just most juggling websites sell them because um, it is grouped in with juggling. So uh, I bought myself a couple and ended up practicing nonstop, like hours and hours every day. A year and a half later, I'm making a living off of it, so.